sky, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous late spring or early summer evening. It is now a, an exciting Friday night at, no it's not, it's Thursday night at Bugs in a Jar Farm. That would be Thursday night, June 2nd. We have the lightning bugs starting to blink here at Bugs in a Jar. All right, and other bugs we won't talk about. So, uh, anyway, what are we going to yak about tonight? Uh, we're going to go down to the Amazon rainforest, uh, to Bolivia and Peru tonight. We're going to skip over Brazil. I'm sure we'll be back with Brazil tomorrow during my Manga Bay rant. Anyway, guys, uh, I just want to touch on this story. Uh, this is in the mainstream media, just kind of a, a little recap of this much more complicated story from nature. Talking about how more lost cities of the Amazon have been uncovered. The legends of the Amazon rainforest have circulated for centuries. Now, though, scientists have finally discovered proof that these massive urban centers actually existed. Researchers have published a new study in the journal Nature detailing LIDAR imaging of the Amazon rainforest within the forest deep, thick regions they discovered evidence of new lost cities of the Amazon. This is actually the Bolivian Amazon just over the southern Brazil border. Um, <clears throat> what was uh, what was once assumed to have simply been legend is now being proven true. Thanks to LIDAR imaging, a group of scientists were able to see through the thick canopies of the Amazon. And underneath all of those trees, they found, what did they find? Remains of a sprawling urban center. Uh, but this isn't just any lost city in the Amazon. The city that scientists uncovered belonged to the socially complex Casarabe culture, which existed between 500 and 1400. Uh, you know, when the Spaniards got there. And they lived in urban centers boasting monumental platform and pyramid architecture, according to the Smithsonian Magazine. Despite being as wild as it is today, the Amazon could have been a heavily populated and urbanized regions, region, scientists say. They believe the new imaging shows evidence of raised causeways that connected different settlements. Further, those settlements are now believed to have stretched miles throughout the Amazon. Uh, one of the authors of the findings says that he predicts the next 10 to 20 years to bring the discovery of more lost cities of the Amazon, and some will be even bigger than the ones outlined in the latest paper. And, and, and I've had this rant before, guys, but it bears repeating. This is just what I think these wild, noble savages of the Amazon rainforest are. What we're looking at, and there's a couple of archaeologists whose name I can't remember who have this theory which makes sense to me that what they're claiming is all of the, you, you know the you know the the classic wild naked savage running around uh, in the Amazon what they are are survivors of the collapse of a major civilization. 
that if you have ever read, if you're interested in this, uh, go back to like, right when the Spanish got there, there was this fellow named Orellana, O-R-E-L-L-A-N-A. -L -L I think his diary was from 1524. So this dude, he, go, he went down the Amazon River. He was the first European to float down there uh, and, and to go explore that area, uh, you know, before smallpox, more than anything, set in and killed all the Indians down there. And, uh, I mean, he was describing in, 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 in detail. Go read his diaries. You can find them. Uh, just Google Oriana's diary of the Amazon. The dude was describing major cities that he was saying were bigger than Paris in, in the year 1500. That, that, you know, major societies. Now, <clears throat> of course, one of the big reasons why you don't find a lot of evidence of this is because everything was built of wood. It wasn't like in the Andes, like with the Incas in the Andes, where everything was built of rock, which is going to be there, you know, long after humans are dead. That The fact was all of these cities were built with wood, and which, of course, rotted. And then the Spaniards came through, and the population, you know, I, I've, I've heard... What is the estimates of the population of the Amazon from that book 1491? I mean, that millions and millions of people live there uh, in, in, in the Amazon. Uh, you know, they were right next to, you know, to the Incas and, and all of these advanced societies. And, and now more and more of this uh, technology is finding evidence, and, and, I, and, and I have no problem with this. Uh, I think there were millions of people uh, in, in, in the Amazon rainforest. I mean, it makes sense to me and what you're looking at today. They were, it's not like, <clears throat> you know, they, they came down from wherever the hell they came from. They came down from the Andes. They came over from Asia. And it doesn't, it's never made any sense to me that why would these, the, these civilizations up there in the mountains, you know, have all of this stuff going, and then these wild, naked savages living just a few miles to the east. Well, what you're looking at is survivors of collapse. You're looking at these tiny few people uh, who survived the collapse of a major civilization. That, that's exactly what these people are, but that is just my, uh, my view for what that's worth. I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. Why, why would the people right here, okay, uh, you know, have all of these advanced civilizations, and, and, and then the guys... Uh, it's literally, when you go down there to the Andes and, and down into the Amazon, like I've done several times, it's unbelievable how close. We're, we're talking like 50 or 60 miles uh, as, as you head east. It makes no sense that there was some dividing line between advanced civilizations and wild, naked savages. It's because they weren't wild, naked savages. And, uh, so, you know, the bottom line, of course, being a doomer, is that humans have been screwing up the Amazon rainforest uh, for thousands and thousands of years. They've been down there uh, in, in all of this primeval, untouched rainforest uh, with just Mother Nature coming back, uh, at, you know, after Honky got here and, and, and killed all the Indians. But anyway... Uh, that out of the way, I'm, I'm here to talk about what I really came here to talk about, and there will probably be more of this in the Manga Bay Roundup tomorrow from the good old mainstream media. This is just a, a perfect textbook example. Uh, they, they just chose Peru for this. 
Uh, good old Associated Press. Immersed in crisis, Peru neglects Amazon destruction. I love that the photo they used is right exactly where I was traveling and reporting about uh, environmental destruction in the rainforests of Peru in 2009. This is exactly where I have been and uh, just completely destroyed. All right. And you can take this story from Peru and, and, and you can make this Bolivia. Uh, you, you, just pick your country. All right. For anybody who does not understand how this works, Peru has descended into one of the worst political crises in its history, and protection of its Amazon rainforest is failing. Yes, according to a report published today, Peru is home to the second largest portion of the Amazon rainforest after Brazil. The country had pledged to stop deforestation by 2021. Well, guess what? It is now 2022 and deforestation is more rampant than it has ever been. As all of this, uh, this ball of wax comes down together, this is a perfect illustration of how economic and political collapse and all of that is, is tied in with ecological collapse. And uh, you can't separate this ball of wax. This, this house of cards is all coming down together. All right. The South American country has been immersed in political turbulence since 2016. Corruption, scandals, and disputes between the executive and legislative branches of government have led to intense turnover. Four presidents in the past five years Peru's current president, the leftist outsider Pedro Castillo, has already survived two impeachment attempts since he took office in July of last year. He's been in office less than a year, and uh, the right-wingers are, you know, and it goes back and forth. It doesn't matter who's in, the right or the left, you know, it's, it's, it's just all going to hell in a handbasket in Peru and, and everywhere else. The Peruvian Amazon is massive, larger than the country of Ukraine, measuring some 68 million hectares, otherwise known as 168 million acres. It holds the headwaters of the Amazon River as well as Manu National Park, one of the most biologically diverse areas in the world. It is a transition zone between the Andes Mountains and the rainforest lowlands, rich in microclimates and ecology. And this is, you know, just what I was talking about a minute ago in that other article about this transition zone. It's, 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 as I was writing in my book in 2009, the, the first time I took a bus from the Andes to the Amazon, it's literally like, like you're on a bus and in, in the space of five miles, you go from one planet to the next. Uh, from the Andes down to the, you, you know, you hit the, the eastern wall of the Andes, which is, you know, the most biologically diverse of all. Uh, just beautiful down there. Anyway, back to the story. The monitoring of the Andean Amazon, pro the monitoring of the Andean Amazon project an initiative of the nonprofit Amazon Conservation Association 
reports that deforestation in the Peruvian Amazon has hit six historical highs in the past 10 years. The analysis is based on data from the University of Maryland, which has kept records since 2002. The worst year ever for deforestation in Peru was 2020, when, Pol when Peru lost around 170,000 hectares, otherwise known as 420,000 acres of Amazon rainforest. Last year, the, that number declined a little, but still ranked as the sixth highest on record. Um, Peruvian official data agrees. I love this term, corrupt actors. Corrupt actors who benefit from environmental crime together with the political crisis have resulted in a lack of government ability to fight environmental crime, the report said. Um, quoting the report, what's more, the Peruvian government continues to prioritize economic development over the protection of the Amazon rainforest, close quote. Imagine that. Uh, anyway, let's see. As in Brazil's Amazon, and they have a link over to Brazil, just like, you know, over the border in Brazil, cattle ranching and agriculture are the main drivers of deforestation in the Amazon. Agribusiness companies and poor migrants from other parts of Peru, this is agribusiness planet eaters. Okay. Poor migrants from other parts of Peru, planet nibblers, both seize land illegally. Other illegal activities that harm the forest are gold mining, logging, and coca plantations. Uh, said um, MAP director Matt Finer, quote, agriculture is now firmly established as the leading driver of deforestation concentrated in the central and southern Peruvian Amazon. This includes both widespread, small-scale agriculture, otherwise known as planet nibbling, as well as recent large-scale activities from new Mennonite colonies. Close quote. Uh, Manga Bay has been reporting about all of these Mennonites moving into the Peruvian Amazon and just, uh, you know, you think of Mennonites. You know, guys, uh, it's everywhere. The report titled The Roots of Environmental Crime in the Peruvian Amazon identifies three actors. I, I love how they use this word actor. I would use the word villain. Uh, identifies three villains behind deforestation. Okay, we have big business such as palm oil companies. You know, palm oil is, is rapidly moving into the Amazon, otherwise known as planet eaters. Then you have entrepreneurial criminal networks which profit from the trade in timber, land, or drugs. I honestly don't know, are those guys planet eaters or planet nibblers? And then uh, you have the cheap labor, you, you know, who go to work for the planet eaters the poorly paid workers who then in turn 
cut down trees and plant coca, you know, for for cocaine. Uh, it, it's it's coming from all sides. The products of these illegal activities end up in other parts of the world. Imagine that. Most of the gold, you know, from all of those uh, planet-eating gold mines, most of the gold goes to Switzerland, the United States, India, and Canada. Now, I'm somewhat surprised by this claim that Peru's domestic uh, market absorbs most of the timber and what is not uh, used uh, right there by Peruvians, the timber that is not used in Peru itself is exported and goes mainly to, come on guys, China. This is called the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Um, around 28 percent of Peru's gold production is illegal, according to the investigation, which also estimates that most timber extraction is done without permits. And as I've said 10 million times, what difference does it make whether the timber extraction or the gold extraction or the whatever else extraction is legal or illegal, it is irrelevant, okay? The, the line between legal and illegal deforestation and gold mining and cattle ranching and all the rest of this crap all over the Amazon rainforest is completely irrelevant. It means nothing, okay? Deforestation is deforestation is deforestation. Gold mining is gold mining is gold mining. Cattle ranching is cattle ranching is cattle ranching. Palm oil is palm oil is palm oil. Doesn't make a damn difference if some corrupt bureaucrat puts some little stamp on a piece of paper calling it legal and putting a thousand dollars in his pocket. Do you understand the difference between legal and illegal uh, down there in the Amazon? Okay, it, it, it's some corrupt uh, one of these guys, I, I spent four years dealing with these, uh, with these jackasses down there. It, 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 you know, it, it's completely the Old West. Anyway, back to the uh, Associated Press. Uh, this is former Environment Minister Manuel Pugar Vidal. Quote, the political crisis has distracted us a lot from environmental problems. Yes, do you think so? And now the corona panic and the war in Ukraine have magnified these problems. So it is Vladimir Putin's fault. Okay. Uh, the, all of the deforestation in the Peruvian Amazon is Vladimir Putin's fault. Make no mistake about whose fault it is for what's going on. It's the same person uh, that I was talking about who's responsible for that uh, Somali woman's 11 children starving to death. It is Vladimir Putin's fault that uh, that woman's 11 kids are starving to death in Somalia. It is Vladimir Putin's fault that uh, the Peruvian Amazon is hitting the ground. Okay, now that we straighten that out, the current government also promotes activities. This is the lefty government. Okay, understand this is the lefty government, not the right-wing government like Bozo Nero. This is the lefty government. Also promotes activities like illegal mining and illegal logging 
the former environmental minister said. Yes. He tied this to the unprosecuted deaths of numerous environmental advocates. So, you know, that, that's this whole other dot connecting about anybody going up against these guys. You're going to get a bullet through your head. It makes no difference if it is some right wing fascist like Ho like Jair Bozo Nero on one side of the border or some lefty like this guy. Now it makes no difference. Anybody who thinks that the lefties are going to do anything different than uh, th these right-wing fascists about saving the Amazon, it is irrelevant which side is in power, okay? They are all a bunch of corrupt, money-grubbing uh, planet eaters who are going to, every time, every time, promote agribusiness over environmental protection. So any of you lefties thinking that, uh, you know what I'm saying, would you please get a reality check? And I am a lefty, despite appearances. Okay, from the unprosecuted deaths of numerous environmental advocates, What's next? Uh, contacted by phone and email, Peru's current Ministry of the Environment did not respond to request for comments about the current situation in the Peruvian Amazon. Wow. It's hard to believe. And for anybody who does not know this, the Amazon rainforest is the world's largest tropical rainforest and an enormous carbon sink. There is widespread concern that its destruction, which is baked into the cake, will not only release massive amounts of carbon into the atmosphere, further complicating hopes of slowing down climate change, but also push it past a tipping point after which much of the forest will begin an irreversible process of degradation into tropical savanna. And I love to see this very subtle difference between the words would and will. This is very subtle, but this is important, guys. Uh, I, you know, for years, the mainstream media has been using the word would instead of will. And I have been changing that every time. The, the term would, something would happen, is a, it, 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 what is that, the conditional tense, if something would happen, even the mainstream media changing it, it's no longer would happen, it is will happen. You can kiss the Amazon rainforest goodbye, it doesn't matter. Brazil, Peru, Bolivia, wherever, it's going bye-bye. It will happen. How quickly will it happen? There will be no Amazon rainforest by the year. A absolute max, 2100. The Amazon rainforest will no longer exist on this planet. And my guess is the African and Asian rainforest will uh, be long gone before the Amazon rainforest 
Okay, comments. Okay, on a planet of 8 billion people, how many comments do you think that story has garnered from readers of Yahoo News? This is this this is a no brainer. If your answer was zero comments, give yourself a gold star. There is nobody on this planet outside of a few doomers talking to themselves uh, who give one damn about the Peruvian Amazon rainforest. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. Not, 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 not a damn thing is going to change about anything. What was it? Uh, what was the story I was just looking at with 771 comments? Can't even remember what it was. Not one human being uh, on a planet of 8 billion people uh, making one comment about uh, a, a, about a area of rainforest the size of Ukraine uh, being obliterated off the face of this planet. Nobody gives a damn. And anyway, but with that, uh, I'm going to wrap this up because I got a big ass bulldozer heading to, uh, got to get ready for this big ass bulldozer heading to, uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm to finish out my levee to keep my little, uh, house from flooding and, uh, going down the river. There was some article here in the mainstream media, uh, from CBS News is predicting today that over the next 20 years that 200 million homes, whatever that means, will be destroyed by flooding. And I certainly uh, assume I am one of the 200 million people who will lose their home to a flood, but we are going to build up the levee and I gotta go save some ferns, move some ferns out of the way. I highly suggest you get out there and save some ferns while you still can. Bye guys. Alright, hello. Did you survive that?